All right, this is Activate Science Week 2 coming at you. So our first question returns back to the first studies we had in, uh, in last week's questions about the uh, wet deposition of these ions in rain. And so they sampled from the top of a, uh, uh, of a building and collected water and then ma managed to measure things. And so this is study three. And in study three, we're looking at annual wet deposition of copper and zinc um, calculated for urban site and that's our gray sections here and then it says also for rural sites one and two located 50 and 100 kilometers east so so this is 50 and this is a hundred kilometers away and so as you get further and further away we're going down and so it's decreasing and you'll notice there's a big break here between 800 and a thousand uh, and then up to 2,000 and 3,000 and 4,000. So that's a really big difference here, a lot bigger than these differences down here. But what we're noticing is that copper decreases and so does the zinc decreases. So according to study three, as a distance from the urban site increased, the annual wet deposition did what? And so we know the urban site, as distance increases, the the deposition decreases. So we can get rid of A, we can get rid of B because they both say increased. We can get rid of D, it says remained. C, decreased, is our best answer. All right. Question number two. We've got a, the same study, uh, different uh, or same question, same passage, different study, and uh, we've got another portion of the combined sample for each month was analyzed for the concentrations of Cl and SO4 ions. Using these data, the monthly wet deposition of each substance in milli equivalents was calculated, and we're looking for which was kept constant in this study. And now this is a question that it looks at our, our knowledge of how to do an experiment. And so we're looking at this and so uh, the deposition is changing. And so we've got wet deposition that's changing all over the place. These are all over the place. These are all over the place. And so we can get rid of those two answers. Um, do we have any way to control right? constant Keeping something constant means it stays the same. Is there any way to control or keep constant monthly rainfall? No. That's the only thing that that's we, we can't. That's what we're measuring. And so the only thing we can keep constant is where we're sampling this, and that would be the site that we're sampling it at. Oh. Let's see. Next question. All right. We now have a new passage. This is passage three. And so uh, question number three here. Cloud cover is the percent of Earth's surface covered by clouds. The clouds may increase because of an increase in cosmic ray flux, which is high energy particles from space reading, reaching the Earth. Table one shows us how Earth's cover of low clouds, low clouds, uh, varies with cosmic ray flux. So we can see that at this much flux, we got 27.8. At this much flux, we've got 28.1. And what you might notice is that there's a difference of 0.3 between each one of these. 0.3, and then 4 to 7 is 0.3, and then 7 to 0, 7 to 10 is 0.3. And so there's a change in 0.3 each of these. That's just something to be aware of when you're looking at a chart like this. And so for every 20,000, right, this is 20K, this is 20K, this is 20k, this is 20k. And so we're looking at this question right here. Based on table one, a cosmic ray influx of 440,000 particles per meter squared per hour would correspond with a cover of clouds that's closest to which of the following. Well, if this was 40 and 60 and 80 and 100 and 20, the next one would be 440. And if we're looking at increasing by 0.3 each time, our next one should be 29.3, which makes H make the most sense. All right, we're still on this passage. And we're looking at cloud cover once again. We're looking at a different graph now. And this different graph is figure one. And figure one shows the relative cosmic ray flux and the monthly average cover of high clouds. This one's high clouds. 
Figure two, right, it says um, respectively. Figure two shows us middle clouds. Figure three shows us low clouds. So this one is high clouds. And so we want to pay attention to what they're showing. They're showing us years on this axis. They're showing us uh, average of high clouds on this axis. And we've got RCRF, which is this one. We've got the cloud cover, which is this one. And so we can see that they don't necessarily look related, maybe an inverse relationship. But we want to ask the question, what percent of Earth's surface was covered by high clouds in January 1987? That's the one we're looking for. And so as we look at this, we want to say 1987. Okay, so 1987 is going to be right here. We've got 80 to 85, 86, 87. And so 1987 are high clouds is this point right here. And this point is right about 13.5. And so that gives us a 13.5 percentage. Okay, on this question, we're looking at our other figure. We're looking at our figure one, which we just had. And we're looking at our figure three, which we now have. And figure three is low clouds versus RCRF and figure one again is high clouds versus RCRF and so what we notice here is that our two lines kind of don't follow each other in the high clouds but our two lines do kind of follow each other in our low clouds and so that's something to be aware of and so uh, the, the question here is asking is the statement the monthly cover of low clouds is more directly correlated with the cosmic ray flux than is the monthly average cover of high clouds consistent with figures one and three. And I dropped my pen. So we're looking at the monthly averages. Is it more directly correlated than the average cover of high clouds? And I think the answer is yes, right? The answer is yes, because obviously the low clouds in RCRF are way more correlated than this one. We got this that goes up and down, and these are totally opposite, right? These are totally opposites. And so uh, we can get rid of ours because we know that that is definitely more directly correlated. Uh, so why? Is it because the plot for the monthly average of low clouds more closely parallels? Does the low clouds parallel it? Low clouds, they were parallel. Pretty sure this is the right answer. Let's look at this other yes, because the plot for the monthly average of high clouds more closely parallels. Well, high clouds did not more closely parallel, so B is not our answer. A is our answer. And there's all of our answers. The first one was C, it decreased by both. The second one it was F. The third one was 29.3. The third one was 13.5. And the fourth one was yes, because low clouds parallels. Thanks, guys. Ask Mr. Stewart any questions you have, and enjoy this week.